off the internet. Originally, I wanted to shoot a video about freelancing today where I have to talk a lot, but you can already hear it. I have to talk a bit louder because you can already hear it in the back. There's a freaking storm hitting Munich today and we got a lot of windows. Be quiet, storm. So this room has windows. This room has more windows. KC is a bit more quiet, but it has almost no light. There is no quiet place inside this house, except for the bathroom. And here I have nowhere to put the tripod. Anyway, I can't shoot the freelancer videos today, so I thought, hmm, it's raining, I'm stuck inside all day, and I've had a pretty shitty day yesterday so I just want to do something fun and chill for once so I thought why not draw a bunch of robots with the Photoshop symmetry tool I did that two days ago in the evening and I just had a blast so I thought I'm gonna show you guys how you can access the Photoshop symmetry tool and yeah then let's draw some robots so the first thing we actually have to do is go to edit, go all the way down to preferences and then here technology previews. So down here is where you will find the enabling symmetry. This will usually be turned off. So you just click the little check mark, go to OK and then this little butterfly up here will appear. If you click on it, it lets you draw a symmetry line and you can use it with the transform tool. You can even put it like this can play around with it and then once you start painting uh, you will have symmetry on yay um, you can also if you're really adventurous use this symmetry grid uh, would be great if you want to do like I don't know you could do that with the symmetry tool which I'm not going to do today because I said I want to paint a robot so um, I'm just going to use the Really, really simple symmetry axis. Might be a bit boring, but I'm just gonna go for a vertical axis. All right, so before I start, I actually, um, <laughs> let me remove it. Um, so I actually wanna give myself some restrictions to make it a bit more interesting. And the way I'm doing that is just to try and come up with some interesting shape language. As you know, there's three forms out there, the circle, the rectangle and the triangle. And for now I want to just try and leave the triangle out of the equation. So I want to do my robot with just two shapes. Um, if you want to do this exercise as well, I just highly encourage you to do so because it will just help you with your design senses and will also help you be more creative because the more restrictions you have the more creative you usually have to be. Um, so now I'm trying to figure out okay what can I do with these two shapes. One thing I also decided um, is that I want to go for filled in shapes. The other thing you could do is take just line work circle and line work shape and then see okay what can I do with the lines, what can I do if I want to do like this just as an example, which is something that I don't, whoopsie, I, but I find it easier to work with silhouettes first, so I'm gonna do that. All right, as you can see, I'm done with my shapes. They're not very good, but this is just a quick demo, so usually I would spend a bit more time on this really try and figure out how to tie them together. Um, just as a quick explanation, my kind of design philosophy here was to always make a rectangle and then cut out a circle or add half a circle. So here I added two, here I added one, here I cut out one and here it's the same. Now, now to give the whole thing a bit more detail, I had these smaller rectangles just as a detailed design element. So these are the forms that I'm trying to build my robot out of. So yeah, now I'm just gonna start sketching. So maybe a small head. And this is really the great thing about the symmetry tool. Like right now I can, I can just draw 
And I can just try and see, okay, maybe I want one with like really heavy legs. Bam. Maybe I want one with four legs, kind of like an Asmodan. <laughs> and then just tiny raptor arms. And you can just really fast like get some get some results here to figure out what kind of body shape you like and you really just go back and forth with the brush. Um, what I try and do here is have one small shape, one big shape and then a middle shape. So for example here I would want the heads to be tiny and then just have this giant torso and then have like smaller You can already start to see me apply some of the design, the, the shapes that I had in mind earlier. So for example, I'm using this one for the head and then some of this stuff here for the legs, but this one is very imbalanced. Now you see where the restrictions come into place because this one is basically just made out of diagonal shapes, triangle shapes down here and round shapes. So this is not what I had back here. So this one doesn't work. <laughs> So now I want to show you one more trick if you're not happy with your mech shapes and forms. I'm super unhappy with the, with the warm-up ones where I was just trying to find interesting body shapes. Um, what you can do is, um, because I drew all of this in a dark grey and not black, you can take two of your shapes and you set the top one to multiply. And sometimes there is an interesting silhouette in there. So now I'm merging this one down. Going to contrast, up the contrast and the brightness to bring it out. Merge that down and boom, here I have my new silhouette, which I can then start working with. Yeah, let me try it with these two if that works. Yeah, with this one it didn't work as well. But what I can try and do here is maybe just erase the legs a bit. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Yeah, so now that I kind of warmed up, I'm going back to the older ones. Yeah, with this one I'm just gonna break my shape rule and I'm making something with triangles because this one kind of looks like a spider, so I want it spidery. I don't know, maybe this will come out horribly, horribly wrong. But yeah, this is for example how you could use triangle and round shapes together. You just, a lot of diagonals. Yeah, as you can see, this one, for example, is just not coming together. But that is totally okay. But see how fast I can just redraw the legs and try out some new stuff. So this is really the advantage of this symmetry tool. I still don't like it. I'm just gonna move on. And one more thing, at least I try to keep in mind, and this helps me a lot, is to see what you like about a design and then make that bigger. I don't know that that sounds really 
dumb at first, but for example with this this one, wait, let me go back to when I started this. Nope, 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 nope. Here we go. So for example with this one, I'm like, okay, I kind of like the arms here. I like this upper body thingy and I don't like this bottom part, this stomach thingy and I don't know what those legs are supposed to be. So what I'm doing is making the arms bigger and cooler and trying to make this part here, these stupid legs, making them smaller, shorter. Balance your creature. For example, you see in the beginning all the features were kind of the same and now the hands are just ginormous and it's like this is the selling point of this creature. This is why this robot is cool because that's the robot with the big hands. And you can see that I'm moving away from the shapes that I had initially, but there were shitty shapes to begin with, so I don't really mind. Because if I see an interesting shape in one of these robots, I want to emphasize that a bit more. Here, for example, I have a lot of curves, curvy designs, and I really want to bring that out a bit more. So um, I will also remove straight lines here that I had for the previous shapes because I don't think they fit that well. I'm also trying to think about what type of character this robot would be at this point. So for example with this one because he looks very friendly, Aww. he would probably carry baggage for people and he would be a very helpful guy. So these are the robots design I drew. I think this took me maybe about an hour. Oh, I should save this file. <laughs> so yeah, this is how you use the symmetry tool. This is how you do robots. And if you try this exercise yourself, uh, feel free to send it my way, uh, tag me on Twitter or leave in the comments. And I would really like to see what you guys come up with. So yeah, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.